Okay, it looks like we're live now. Uh, let's make sure that everything's working okay here. There was, oh gosh, there's 20 people watching. Hey guys, how's it going? I got uh, a few things set up here. So um, if you don't know me, my name is John Moore. I'm a uh, Microsoft MVP in Office Apps and Services. And I'm really excited. I've got a um, big, exciting new feature. Just hit my demo tenant as well as my home tenant, and that is NDI in Microsoft Teams. And uh, I thought I would test it out by going live today. And um, as we go, if you have questions, uh, if you want me to try something out, I'm free to uh, do that and try out some stuff. And uh, we can check it out together and kind of learn some new things. Um, I'm a little bit out of breath because 10 seconds before uh, I went live, I realized I didn't have a drink. So I had to run up two flights of stairs and uh, grab a drink real quick. And now I'm out of breath. And then also I realized that the laptop I was gonna demo from uh, just installed Windows updates. So we're gonna let that go ahead and uh, boot up and log in here. Fortunately, it's an SSD. So we got the chat here. Um, we'll bring this on screen periodically so we can uh, do some, um, some chatting back and forth and all of that. And um, a little bit out of my element because one of the challenges here, I like to start out a lot of these live streams with like how I'm doing the live stream, uh, you know, kind of logistics of how it's all set up. And it's kind of interesting. Usually what I use is OBS or Streamlabs OBS. And um, that's kind of hard to use that to do the live stream and demo using it or build scenes or things like that. I thought that, you know, of course that's going to not work if I'm using it to drive the stream. So what I'm using today is I did a, a webcam go live with, uh, with YouTube and I'm using a new app. This is my first time ever using this. Um, I'm a beta tester for an app called mm -hmm. it's M M H M M. And that's going to do like, it's like crazy house of mirrors. Um, but this is an app where it's only available on Mac right now, but uh, you can have your screen, you can have your little presenter view. So it's cutting me out all nicely. And you can have that output as a virtual camera. So that is coming through as a webcam. I've got my laptop screen right here. And then I'm like in the corner right there. So I'm hoping that this is gonna work pretty well. Uh, my CPU on my Mac seems to be doing out, uh, doing pretty well. So um, those of you guys who have a Mac, if you sign up for a mm -hmm app, uh, then you know we can, uh, we can test it out. I've actually got five invitations available for the beta. So if you're a Mac user and you want to, um, you want to test it out, if you want to send me a DM on uh, Twitter, then um, I'll, I'll add your email address and you can try it out. So, uh, hey, Andy, I see that, that you're there and Spencer. Um, so a few of us are, are uh, checking this thing out. I know Andy's on a, uh, on a Mac, so if you want to check out this little webcam app, it's pretty cool. Um, so without further ado, let's dive in. Um, NDI stands for, I think, Network Display Interface or Network Device Interface. And it's basically a network uh, video technology that allows you to sling video and audio around your network. Um, it's mostly used internally for your local area network, your LAN. And um, it allows you to do things like, I've got my phone here, it has an NDI application on it, on iOS, so that I can, um, I can have a wireless camera that projects over my network, and then I can basically capture that feed on another device on my network and then bring it in. So um, for instance, if I do NDI virtual input, there's this NDI toolkit that you can get that um, allows you to grab these things from your network. So in OBS, I can grab like my NDI source here, call this my iPhone. And then because I'm running this app on my network, you see my iPhone comes up. It's discovered on my network. Now if I hit OK, that's going to come in here. And now we see um, what's coming from my phone. 
So I'm a little bit far away from my wireless network, so it's not really the, uh, the best example of this, but uh, the device that I'm gonna be using here is hardlined over ethernet. So um, I was hoping, yeah, that I could, uh, I could get this to work for you. So um, we're gonna go ahead and hit the screen and just show you, this is the laptop we're gonna test on, um, this NDI uh, in Teams. It's only available on Windows right now. So because I'm primarily a Mac user, I had to break out the, uh, the old uh, Dell computer there. So we've got that going. There's um, the chat and everything up on my screen so I can monitor that. And then we're gonna demo from this screen right here. So that's the screen that you're seeing right behind me. So let's, uh, let's get rid of that and get rid of OBS and talk about how to enable this first. So because this is Windows, we've got a Windows virtual machine right here. And um, like, a, uh, like a good MVP, I'm doing this in a demo tenant so that we don't show anything that we're not supposed to show. And um, there's two parts to enabling NDI in Microsoft Teams. And I'll bring up this, uh, this little document right here. And I'm gonna paste this in the chat as well. If you're looking for the document for how to enable uh, NDI and Microsoft Teams, this is what you're going to look for. And basically, you have to turn it on at the admin tenant level. A Teams admin has to do this. So they'll log in and they'll either toggle a switch, that's what we're going to do, or they can run this PowerShell command um, to create a new meeting policy and set a flag in that meeting policy to allow NDI streaming. Now, this is what we did in our home tenant for a subset of users, the people on my team the people on our enterprise events team now have a new uh, NDI meeting policy that has this flag set to true. So that's how um, our guys are able to, to grab these feeds and start using this feature. So over here in Contoso, <clears throat> I do not have this enabled yet. So I'm gonna open up my Contoso tenant admin right here. If you're ever wondering who the, uh, the global admin of uh, Contoso was, it was me all along. So we're going to go ahead and log in here, and we're going to check out the admin center to turn on NDI for Megan. Now, Megan, this is her Teams account. She would be looking in settings for Microsoft Teams under permissions, and she doesn't see the NDI options right here quite yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the admin, her helpful IT administrator. will run into the Teams admin center right here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab Teams Admin Center. That's gonna open up. And then under Meetings and then Meeting Policies. So ideally, you would create a new meeting policy for your you know, events team or whoever you want to enable NDI for. You'd create a policy for them and allow them to, uh, to turn on NDI so they can broadcast the participants of their meeting to other places. Um, because I'm a little bit nuts, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it in the global policy so we can make it show up for everybody, including Megan. And the flag for this is under audio video, about almost all the way down, there's allow NDI streaming. So this is what you're gonna wanna look for as a Teams admin in your environment. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on and then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and hit save. This is going to update that global policy, which Megan has applied to her. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and refresh the Teams app and she should have that switch now. So back over here on Teams, we're gonna do a little bit of experimenting. Um, under settings, so she hasn't done anything, it still doesn't show up. So let's see, as an admin, do I have to tell Megan to close out of the Teams app or do I have to tell her to fully sign out and sign back in. So the least destructive way to do this is to just close the app. So I'm gonna right click on Teams. I'm gonna hit quit, which I'm covering the screen right there. There, there it is, hit quit. <laughs> and I'm back. Um, we're gonna quit the Teams app and then bring it back up and see if that switch is available to us. So this cutout is kind of working okay. It's not doing too bad. Behind me, I don't have a green screen or anything like that. It's just the the app cutting me out. <clears throat> so 
Now she's back up and running in team. She did not sign out. She just quit the application, which, you know, a bonus tip here that if you just quit Microsoft Teams, then this checkbox for the new pop-out meetings, that will be retained. The expected functionality though, is if you were to sign out of Teams and sign back in, that will reset and it will be unchecked right now. So heads up for the next few weeks until that becomes the, uh, the default experience. So we're gonna check in permissions now and she still does not have the switch. So let's go ahead and sign her out of Teams and sign her back in to see if this is what we need to do. So she has signed out of Teams. We're gonna go into my demo environment and grab her password real quick. Didn't have this tab open. So my environments, we've got Right here, there's Megan's user ID. So we're gonna hit continue, paste in Megan's user ID. And then we're gonna paste in her auto-generated password here in a moment. Oh, I guess it was already stored in the, the Windows credential store, so we didn't have to do that. So you can see it's taking longer to load this time, so it's, uh, it's gonna do its thing. Back here on the comments, we got, um, Tyler's asking, have I tried Wirecast? What are my thoughts on it? I tried to try Wirecast. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get very far. I signed up for a trial for it and I never got the um, unlock code. I never got like the trial code to test it out for 30 days. And I kind of gave up after a couple tries of you know trying to reach Wirecast. Um, one thing that's interesting about Wirecast is there is a full version or there's like there are all their editions of Wirecast. There's also a Wirecast S edition that is just for Microsoft Stream. Um, that's significantly less expensive. So if all you're doing is Office 365 and you need to only output to Microsoft Stream, you might look at something called Wirecast S uh, to save a little bit of money. Um, but from what I understand, it, it kind of, I think, is a little bit more like vMix works where you've got um, kind of a layer uh, idea and I'm more used to OBS and how OBS does it because that's what I learned on. But um, I think I, I think a lot of the people who are more experienced than me um, prefer like vMix layout or like Wirecasts layout. I think people who are a little bit more DIY like um, game streamers on Twitch, things like that, kind of tend to OBS just because that's what they what they learn on, kind of like I did. Um, Andy says. Uh, green screen chroma for the, for the win. Yeah. Uh, I, I've thought about getting like an Elgato green screen, but, um, I, I'd worry that I wouldn't use it enough to justify the cost. Thanks for watching Jim. Jim's going to be one of the guys that jumps on a, a test call for us to, to test this out in real life. So Megan, she's all rebooted into teams. We go into the settings for her and under permissions. Does she have it? She still doesn't quite have it yet. So that's a bit of a bummer here. Okay, so you're saying that the chroma key is looking good still. That's, that's a good thing. Um, let's sign out and sign back in again. I tested it this morning, that, that flip of the switch from the admin center, it happened immediately that she got the switch. So I was like, well, I'll turn it back off then and that'll be easy to show how it works, but now, of course, it's gonna have a nice delay on it for me. That's gonna be annoying. I may have to like log out of Windows completely. I'm not quite sure. <clears throat> Almost there. If it doesn't show up this time, I'll just show you on this um, Dell laptop here with my actual account. So under settings, we go here. And this is, remember what I said about like, you got to turn on the new meetings experience. So because she signed all the way out and signed all the way back in, she can recheck that box. Actually, I'm going to recheck that box. And then I'm going to go ahead and quit the application and just log back in. So I mean, I don't think it has anything to do with the new uh, meeting experience, but this will for sure uh, rule that out. <clears throat> yeah, let's pray to the, to the demo gods now. 
Uh, yeah, I did hit save in the in the admin center, Andy. So if I go back into the global defaults, um, allow NDI is right there, and it is on, so that's good. It is saved, so we're good there. Um, let's see if turning on the new meeting experience did anything for us. So we're going to go in here. Now that is checked because you check it, you restart the app, it's checked by default. Now you have those cool pop-out meetings. If we go to permissions, okay, she still doesn't have it yet. That's the thing with meeting policies. They can take up to a couple hours to, um, to show up. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to... I'm going to point my camera at, uh, at this laptop and just show you what it looks like. So back to my trusty iPhone here. I'm going to beam this over the network and grab John's iPhone. We should see it here in a second. And we will fit it to the screen. So now you're looking at my super fast wireless network. And if I go here and open up Microsoft Teams. We're gonna pause over here just in case I show any uh, of my, you know, super secret chats here. Okay, we're in a safe spot. So I have Microsoft Teams uh, right here on my home tenant. And basically this is where you go. You're gonna to go to permissions right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Permissions. And then NDI right there is a is a, uh, a switch that you flip. Now, whenever you flip this switch, let me turn it off, turn it back on. It will spin for a second, um, which is downloading some files and doing some, uh, some script running in the background on your local device. So you'll see a little spinner for about a second, and then that will be flipped on, and you'll have that, that meeting experience in, uh, inside of Microsoft Teams. So it's 3.18 right now. Those guys are going to join a call at 3.30, and then we'll be able to start talking about, um, about uh, like actually showing this off. So in the meantime, just pretend that she has this, this switch. We'll actually test it from my laptop, though. So <laughs> thanks for the, the cool desk setup uh, thing. I, I try. It's a, it's a pretty nice little desk setup that I, I like to have. Now, I've got OBS running here. If you don't know about OBS, it's a free open source um, encoding software solution. So um, this is what I was using to demo for um, our sales team, our KC Experience Center. Um, we talked about the idea of having like a pre-show and a post-show. That's normally what I do when I go live. Um, you can have your pre-show right here. That's called a scene where you have um, all of your sources right here in the middle. These are sources. That's things like text, graphics, music, uh, cameras that you're bringing in, stuff like that. Those are your sources. When you collect those sources together, um, that's called a scene. And your scenes are to the left right here. So I've got this pre-show scene. If I go to post-show scene, that's, hey, thanks for watching. Um, if I flip over here to the camera, you see the output from my camera. Now you see my background a little bit that's blurred out on the app. Uh, if I flip over to my screen, though, that will also show, you know, like a little picture in picture. I can go to a side by side. So hopefully you're getting the, the idea here that with OBS, you have basically unlimited creativity to have a nice branded background, have a screen um, with the speaker next to it. Well, what we want to do is we want to, you know, we can even bring an iPad in. This is something you would do with NDI. On my iPad, I can run something called NDI Display Capture, and then that would send my iPad display wirelessly on my network so that I could display it right there. I could have my iPad, my face, company logo, all that cool stuff. Now, the most common use, I think, for NDI is probably going to be this, a panel view. This is what, um, you know, previously to this point, a ton of podcasts, um, if you look at like the background, if you ever watch a video about how we do our super cool podcast, video podcasting, um, they typically do it with Skype consumer because there's a Skype creators edition that had NDI in it. And then they could have a Skype call and then they could basically break apart the participants of that call 
and bring them in um, to their nice branded thing. So you know, I watch um, like Nintendo podcasts and things like that. You'll, they'll be spread out across the country and they can bring each other in um, to the scene and then the producer can send that off to a YouTube live event. Well, that's what's so exciting about Teams NDI is now I don't have to have the presenter sign up for a Skype account. I don't have to have them um, you know, use their personal Microsoft account, get into Skype. Our entire organization, 30,000 people, we use Microsoft Teams today. Now, because I have NDI and Teams, I can just tell them we're going to have a regular Teams call, a regular Teams meeting, and then I can just flip on the NDI switch, and now I can pull them into OBS. I can lay them out on the screen exactly how I want it to be, and then send it off to Microsoft Stream, to YouTube, Facebook Live, wherever it's going to go on the live streaming broadcast um, side of the house. So that's one of the things that people have asked me a lot is like, okay, I'm, I'm into Teams live events, Teams encoding. It's great. I can have the person over here on one side. I can have their screen on the other. But what if I want two people on screen? Well, Teams live doesn't do that. What you have to do is get into like the, the encoder world of OBS Studio. So we want to basically have three or four faces next to each other on the screen right here. So I'm going to start out with a brand new scene collection and we're going to build one of these like custom layouts um, here with some, uh, some stuff. So we're going to call this NDI playground. And this is what ND, what OBS looks like when you first get it out of the box. So we're going to go ahead and create this. It's going to be a panel discussion. And then maybe I want to have a scene called speaker plus slide. We're going to talk about um, one of the cool things in, in uh, Teams NDI, which is active speaker and shared screen. And then the, this default scene that might be like your pre-show or something like that. So the panel discussion, I've got just a black screen. That's kind of ugly. Let's add a background to it. So we start out with an image. We're going to call this background. Really, uh, really insightful there. And then over here on OBS, I have an OBS folder with some assets that I've grabbed from, uh, from different places. And I've got this one, it's called Textured BG. This is the background for our Microsoft Teams displays. So I like it, it's kind of cool textures uh, in the background. One place, uh, Martina Grom, an MVP that I know from Austria, she uh, mentioned on Twitter just the other day, unsplash.com. That's a cool place that you can grab some files like abstracts and stuff like that. So um, actually, let's just grab one of those. So unsplash. So this is that website that she was talking about. And if you're needing a background for like your podcast or something like that, you could search for like abstracts. And this is a bunch of cool abstract pictures. So we can just grab one of these randomly and use that in our scene. Actually, I really like this one. It looks kind of like a painted wall. So let's just go ahead and grab that. Um, these are free, you know, things that you can use, these, uh, these pictures here. And then now we're going to point this picture to downloads, photo board. There we go. I kind of like that. That looks pretty cool. Um, and then I'm going to transform. I'm going to fit that guy to the screen. And we'll make it just a little bit bigger so that it's, you know, Kind of like that, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. So that covers the whole the whole thing. I'm going to lock that in place so I don't accidentally move my background. Now, this is a panel discussion, so maybe I'm one of the panelists. I have a couple people from um, NDI who are panelists. I'm going to go ahead on my laptop. I'm going to join this Teams meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and turn down the speakers. And we're gonna hit join now. So I'm gonna start at that meeting, see if the other uh, folks from my team so will join that. Meeting, see if the other uh, folks from my team will so join that. Meeting, see if the other, uh, folks from my team. Okay, let me. Uh, meeting, there we go, turn down that speaker, good Lord. Um, so there we go. We've got that meeting started. Those guys will start piling in, but I'm going to bring in some of these NDI sources. So what you would typically do if everybody was in the room 
is you could grab a video capture device and you could call this like the host. Say I'm hosting this on my local camera and I could select my cam link 4K. There's my nice uh, clear picture right there and I could crop that down. Go ahead and do something like that and I could make it a little bit smaller. Now I've got Jim over here on my laptop and I've got Teams NDI uh, like switched on on the laptop. So if I open this up, I have an NDI source. Now, one question that people might have, I wonder if this zooms in at all. If this zooms in, we'll see. Um, how did I get that NDI source in OBS? That is another wrinkle right here. What you're gonna wanna do is download a plugin called OBS NDI plugin. And from there, that's from their forums right here. You've got this, uh, this GitHub. And if you go to the, uh, the releases for that, then you can download um, the latest version of this plugin. And you install that. There's the Mac OS installer, the Windows installer. Install that and it will give you a few things. It will give you this little checkbox right here for NDI source. It will also give you the ability to NDI output. So you can take your OBS and you can send all of the mixture that we have here. You can send that out to your network so that you could do NDI input on another device and use that um, you know, like as a virtual camera in Microsoft Teams as well. So I've got that NDI source right here because I have the plugin. We bring that up and Jim McFarlane is on my call. So I'm gonna name it Jim. And then you'll see that I've got a few extra things. The last time I showed this, it only had my iPhone on it. Well, now you see my laptop shows up, Microsoft Teams. There's local, which is my camera. That would be the little laptop camera built in right here. There's also the active speaker that we'll talk about in a second. That will actually switch the speaker out for who's currently talking, or you can hard code it to Jim McFarlane. Now, this is pretty interesting. What I've learned is this is MS Teams dash Jim McFarlane. It will always be called that. So if I go to another meeting or say you've got a monthly town hall with your CEO, the CEO is in their house and you're remotely the producer, their name is never gonna change. So if you set up this scene and you've got CEO name you know, tagged right there, then you won't even have to go select them again because their name will always be the same source name. So that's a really awesome thing to, to have right there. So we're gonna hit okay. And there Jim just popped up. So there's Jim McFarlane. Go ahead and wave Jim if you hear what I'm saying. There he is. So he's, he's listening through YouTube and hopefully you guys aren't hearing Jim on here. Um, so there's that and you'll notice a few things. It's, this is really hard to see because Jim has a light up there, but you see the Microsoft Teams logo right there. That's something you should be aware of. It's branded so that everybody knows this call is coming from Microsoft Teams. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop him down though because maybe I want him to be uh, in portrait mode. So I can go ahead and squeeze him down Go ahead and do that. I could even, you know, crop him down here. And actually now that little Microsoft Teams logo is out of the way right there. Maybe I want him to be just a little bit more portrait mode and we could have him right here. And we can have a side by side. I can right click on the transform right here and I can center vertically. Now it will center the host vertically on the screen. If I right click transform now he's centered on the screen, so now we're side by side, all nice and perfectly. And that's how you would bring in these multiple people. Uh, I see Morris just joined the call. Thanks, Morris, for joining, if you hear me. Um, so now we're gonna grab Morris. NDI source, Morris Montejo, grab him. And you'll see now he joined, so now Morris is listed. So we're gonna grab his input, and in about a second, there's Morris with his awesome webcam that he's got in his house. And you see the Microsoft Teams logo a little bit more pronounced there. He's got his hue light going up there in the <laughs> top corner. And I can make him smaller. I can make him bigger. Uh, we'll make him the same size as Jim. 
we'll kind of squeeze that down right there. And then we'll crop him down to be nice and skinny right there. But hopefully you're kind of getting what, what, I've, what I've been explaining about. Like you could build like your little podcast here, have your company logo in the corner, stuff like that. And then you could record using OBS. You could live stream directly to, you know, Facebook externally, live stream to Yammer internally if you want to, and um, get your layout like this. So Morris and Jim are just going to talk to each other here about how their day's going and stuff like that. That way the active speaker will switch back and forth and we'll talk about the active speaker option where we have this speaker plus slide. So again, let's go ahead and let's add an image right here. And because I've already added this background, I can just use it again. So boom, there's the background. We're gonna go ahead and, and make that a little bit smaller so it's not this huge gigantic picture here. Make it smaller. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to lock that in place. And then now with NDI source, Jim or Morris, if you guys could share your screen, that would be great. Then we would be able to, to do that. So what we'll call this one is active speaker. And now this is like a variable. So I hit OK. And I could select what before I selected them by name. Well, this time I just want to select the active speaker. So that will grab whoever is speaking right now. You remember back in the days of, um, of like Skype, uh, you know, Office Communicator was this, or well, like WebEx is this way, where it would like switch out who was the biggest person on the screen as the active speaker. Well, Teams monitors that as well. If you're in like a gallery view, it'll put like a little box around whoever's speaking. If, um, if you have just their avatar, you see like this little purple ring going around. Well, the active speaker is notifying NDI that like this is the person to display. No, that's the person to display based off of who's talking at the time. So if I do that, oh, there's Spencer is the active speaker <laughs> apparently. So now Spencer Vincent is on here. He's got his uh, one of his newborn babies. He uh, just had his wife just had twins. Um, what is it? What's been like 10 weeks ago now? eight or 10 weeks ago, something like that. So there's one of his little guys right there. He, he went from one boy to three boys all of a sudden. So thoughts and prayers for Spencer <laughs> dealing with the chaos in his house. But you'll see that he's the active speaker. So now no hands on the keyboard. Uh, Morris or Jim, if you guys start talking, we should see that automatically swap out. So if you guys are hearing me, somebody else talk. Okay, Morris, I see his mouth moving. So, and now you see that Morris flipped around and this also did something funky. So notice how Spencer was yay big. And then when Morris started talking, he was pretty big, but then he got small. It's because of that, that variable bit rate that's coming in, um, you know, doing like network traffic shaping and stuff like that. You might notice that the windows jump in size, they get bigger or smaller. Well, a way that you can fix that is if I right click, I want everybody to fit inside this box. I'm gonna right click and do transform. This is the key if you have it jumping up and down in size. Transform, bounding box, if you hit scale to inner bounds right here. So select that option and it will stop resizing automatically. So if we hit close, I wish I had, if I was on Wi-Fi, you would see it jumping a lot more because it would be, kind of struggling to keep up. So now Jim is the current active speaker. Spencer's probably going to swap here in just a second because I see his mouth moving right now. Um, so we're gonna grab another one. This is the speaker plus scene or plus the slides. So we're gonna call this screen. And the other variable that we have that can swap out based off of who's sharing their screen is this one called shared screen. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that and hit okay. And now you will see Morris's window pop up and Morris is currently showing in this meeting, he's currently showing um, a, uh, a power app that we built. He's, he's being a big show off. We built a power app internally that we were showing off today in our, uh, our engineering uh, expo that we did where 
this is how we do um, our message center updates in Microsoft Teams is uh, we, we meet every week. We go over every message in the message center. Um, I watch the message center show with um, uh, Daryl and, uh, and Daniel, if you guys uh, watch them as well. I watch that to kind of get like the inside scoop of like what a lot of these things mean. And then we talk about them and we take action on each individual item. Like, hey, we're going to make a video about this. That's just going to be a Yammer post. Hey, this thing's coming in October, so we need to start testing it. That's how we decide what we're going to do. So he's showing that off. I've got the active speaker in the lower corner. And now this could basically just run on autopilot right here. Now, maybe I don't want the active speaker, but what I could do is I could add everybody back in here. So we got Jim. He's hard-coded right there. I've got NDI source Morris. He's hard coded in and he's a little bit bigger cause he's got a, a little bit clearer image there. So we'll make him smaller and make him fit right there. And then we'll add Spencer in here and we'll grab Spencer from the list right there. Hit okay. And Spencer, this is good. Spencer is actually not showing his camera right now. So, if the person who's remote, who's in your Teams meeting, if you're pulling them in through NDI and they decide to hide their camera, this is what will be displayed. You'll get this nice uh, Teams logo with these like kind of flying specks coming at you. So it's nice because you have something moving on screen. Um, it's not just a static image, so it doesn't look like it's frozen. Uh, that's, that's something that I, I really like. So I can put Spencer down there. If he comes back to his camera and turns it on, then he'll automatically show up right there. And now I'm just gonna kind of rearrange these. Obviously, when you're not live on YouTube, you would spend a little bit more time actually lining these up and making them look good. But now this could be my live event. I could grab all of these. Well, see, Spencer just got really small. Uh, Morris kind of resized. So again, we wanna to go to transform. And we want to scale to inner bounds. We want to do that for everybody. Um, edit transform, scale to inner bounds. He's already good to go, but Spencer is not. So Spencer, we're going to grab him, edit transform, scale to inner bounds. And now he's going to be locked into that size right there. Morris is already locked into that size. So I can just make him a little bit smaller. And I can kind of have everybody like lined up. So this is something you can do today with the likes of um, like StreamYard allows you to have like this. You got three people on the side. You got the screen over here. Well, now you can do that with OBS and with Microsoft Teams. Now, another trick that I've done in the past is say I'm going from this panel discussion view. So he's got to fix that, don't I? Um, so say I go from this panel discussion view to speaker and slides, that fades from one scene to another. There's a plugin that I found that's called the Move Transition. Um, search on the OBS forums for the Move Transition. What you can do with that is that gives you something similar to the StreamYard look and feel. So I'm gonna grab a Move Transition. We're gonna add that. And then I don't know if I need, okay, so that's a little bit too fast, but you kind of get the gist right here. If I go with the properties, actually let's make this, instead of 300 milliseconds, let's make this a thousand milliseconds. Then now it should go a little bit smoother. So as you're going from the panel view, now you can go to the speaker view and everybody moves just like how StreamYard works, where you can have it like that. And then, oh, let me show you something on my screen. The producer can go there and everybody just kind of slides. It's kind of like the morph transition in PowerPoint. So check that out. It's called the move transition in OBS. Yeah, Andy just said that's like the morph in PowerPoint. So that's really cool. Um, so there's that. That's one of the biggest tricks is make sure that you go into your transform, you scale to inner bounds. Um, make sure you have the NDI plugin installed. And, um, and then, yeah, you just gotta be aware that it's gonna have this little logo in the upper corner. Hopefully Microsoft will move that around, um, allow you to move it 
into different corners if you want to. Um, I'm hoping that Microsoft will allow us to hide it since this is a paid service. My personal opinion is that if it's something that enterprises are paying, you know, a lot of money to have Microsoft Teams, they should be able to turn that off and just use it as like a back-end infrastructure thing for their big corporate live streams. It, it might mess with their corporate branding um, and that's not, not very good. So a couple of comments here. Let's look at some of these. I got pray the demo gods. We, we got it working at least on the laptop here. So um, <clears throat> Stuart, uh, do, do you work for Microsoft, Stuart? See like dash Microsoft. So he started playing with it, uh, with it today. I think it's going to be really big, especially for um, like podcasts and things like that. If we're all remote. Um, what I love about this NDI technology is the fact that you don't have to be on the same local network because now it's enabled in teams. You can use teams as that communication backbone and you can bring it into whatever service you need, like Facebook live, something like that. So got stuck on NDI for ages ago. Uh, for ages today, actually. I was trying to get meeting content. Problem was I was the only person in the meeting. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big trick is that if it's just you, you'll only see local. Um, you, you have to get like other people in. So ideally, you're the producer running OBS and you're not going to be on screen because you're just going to be behind the scenes making sure the show looks and works good. But um, if you have to use that local source, that will be you. Uh, in this experience. So um, add existing sources makes life easier. Yeah, that does make life a lot easier to, to reuse those sources. You can also copy a source and then when you paste the source, you can duplicate it or you can paste a reference. If you paste a reference, then it retains those settings from where else the source is at. Um, is there a limit to how many people you're going to have in your panel? Um, I haven't found the limit yet, but I will say that I tested this. Uh, we used to use vMix Call, or technically we do still use vMix Call for like our big corporate town halls. We're hoping to, re to be able to use Teams for that because um, Teams can go higher. So vMix, I believe, was stuck at seven or eight people. Uh, recently, we tested with my entire team and our enterprise events team. We did 16 people. I put all 16 people on the screen, and there was no lagging. Everybody looked nice and crisp. Everybody had a little Microsoft Teams logo in the upper corner, um, and it worked extremely well. I haven't pushed it beyond 16, but I'd like to at some point. Um, power apps, yeah, we're doing all kinds of crazy power app stuff. Um, what great possibilities for, for Teams and NDI? Yeah, I think this is really going to, it's the missing link that we've wanted like really since March, whenever we all went to work from home. It was like, okay, how do we bring multiple people into OBS. And we've had to look at things like OBS Ninja, look at things like Skype uh, Creators Edition. And the biggest challenges around that is many times who you're bringing in is an executive. And it's, it's a huge pain in the butt to have to try to get an executive to go to a website they've never gone to before and go to this thing called OBS Ninja or get them to download Skype when, you, when they just started using Teams get them to log in. Like now it can just be teams that you use all day, every day. So that's like really exciting. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I'll try this tomorrow with Ecamm. Yeah. Um, that I really want to get Ecamm at some point. Uh, I'm trying out the, the mm -hmm app, M M H M M. If you want an in uh, an invite to that, let me know on Twitter. And I've got like five invites that I can share. So uh, if you want to get in on that, it's for Mac only right now. So, okay. Yeah. Lots of people saying they're, they're going to play with this. Is there anything that you guys want to see, see us do with this, uh, with this while I've got these guys here on screen, I might play with this, uh, this layout a little bit more here. So I've got more as he kind of got squeezed and weird and that's because of this transform. What you want to do first is you want to do transform scale to inner bounds. And then now any transform that you do to it, like cropping, is going to respect that, that setting of scale to inner bounds. Now I can grab him and kind of crop him in and get rid of these red lines by just kind of squeezing it together. 
and that's about the same size. So he looks pretty good. Jim McFarlane, he, he looks about the right aspect ratio. He's just a little bit too big. Kind of make him smaller. And now what we could do is we could transform center to the screen. So uh, Jim is the, is the center of the universe and we can kind of space it out. So the three of us are, you know, looking pretty good on screen like that. So um, one thing you'll notice, actually, here's another thing with OBS. You'll see that only one person is talking. So Jim and Morris are both on screen, but Jim is the one moving his mouth. He's the one talking. It might even be my microphone. Somebody's talking. And you see how the audio mixer is bouncing at the same level. If you take OBS and you send it out this way, you're going to end up with uh, audio doubling because what happens is with NDI over Teams, this was a thing with Skype NDI as well, it comes in as a combined audio feed. So unfortunately, I don't have the power to just turn Jim down, but leave Morris like turned up because his mic is quieter. All I have is the whole mix for the entire meeting. So what you want to do is you want to only have one of these audio feeds right here be active. So we're just going to mute Morris and we're going to say Jim is the master feed. Now I'll we'll only have one audio. And over here on speaker plus slides, see how if I scroll down, there's lots of this, you know, matched audio going on here. So I want to go ahead and just hide that one, hide that one. So now the only audio coming in is the combined audio coming down Jim's feed. So a couple of pieces of, of feedback that I would like to like to see changed. I'd like to be able to turn off the, the logo right there. And I'd like to see if it's possible to have um, separated audio, discrete audio for each person. That way I could add, you know, noise gating to a specific person or compression to a specific person, stuff like that. So um, any more questions pop up here? We got going to play with this. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Peter. Uh, can you show off the OBS feed outputting to Teams? Actually, Andy, I can't, unfortunately, um, because I'm on a Mac. Uh, a recent update to Microsoft Teams, they disabled all virtual cameras on the, uh, the Mac app. So I can't show that on this screen, but if you're on a PC, you have two options that, that I know of. Um, there's NDI virtual input, and then there's OBS virtual camera. And basically you install either of those little utilities and that will let you take this, if you go to tools, NDI output, main output, that will let you take everything that's in this main output window and that can come out as a virtual camera. And then when you go into Teams, you would be able to bring that in as your camera. So instead of selecting your webcam, you switch it to uh, you know the name of the OBS output and when you're looking at the two different ones, a lot of people use the virtual camera plugin. Personally, I would recommend that you go to NDI tools and install the thing called NDI virtual input. One, because it works on Mac or PC. And two, because um, it will take the video and the audio from OBS. So if you just use the OBS virtual camera, that doesn't create a virtual microphone. So in Teams, if you're playing music in OBS, you're not going to hear it in your Teams call, so that would be kind of um, kind of the thing to do there uh, between those. So, want to ask the same as is output. So, this is called NDI out according to Microsoft, and that's because the Teams application is outputting everybody as NDI sources, so you can pull them in. Teams, what I'm hoping they'll build is something called NDI in which would mean that in Microsoft Teams, you could input some type of NDI thing that's on your network. And if that were the case, if they were to add that, then you wouldn't need a virtual camera plugin. Basically, all you would need is in OBS, you would just output this stage, really, this program output. You would send that over, out over NDI, and Teams would theoretically be able to just capture that as a camera input, so then you can play your music, do all that cool stuff. So, so yeah, it's an output because it's coming out of Teams. What we're looking for, I don't know if there's a user voice for it yet, 
but I would hope that eventually we could get an NDI input into Teams and then we'd have the complete package. But until then, Andy, um, what you can do is I prefer NDI virtual input if you have a Windows computer. Um, there's actually also, let me grab a link from my Twitter here from, where's he at? Uh, Luca, Luca Vitali, if I pronounce that right. Um, he published actually this WordPress blog um, that explains how to get NDI or how to get like NDI output into Teams using those NDI tools called virtual input. So there's a blog step by step how to do it for those of you guys who are watching. I'm curious how many people are even even in this uh, this YouTube live right now. Let's let's go over here. I got my live event up. So there's 25 people on. Thanks for for watching everybody. There's six likes and a lively comment section. It's a little bit awkward just talking like quietly in my room by myself. I have no idea how, how anybody's reacting to any of this. So I'm just droning on for, for a good hour here. Um, so you can use the, the OBS output as a virtual webcam, project the output on a desktop and grab the desktop in Teams. So yeah, you could do something like that. Um, I have seen people, there's, what is it called? Like the NDI scan converter? I think it's the NDI scan converter will, will open up things. Like there's Windows stuff. No, that's, that's not it. Maybe it's the NDI monitor, NDI video monitor. So one thing you could do is you could grab, this is the NDI video monitor. You could grab this and see there's the name of my Mac. It's C0. There's OBS. Let me mute my speakers. So there is my NDI output. So like Tomislav was saying, you could do that. You could make it full screen and then share your desktop in Teams. Um, that would work. I, I would imagine the audio is probably not going to be great if you do that. Um, so it's definitely a lot really good to use virtual cameras. It just kind of sucks that we can't do it on a Mac. I really hope that they can work around that soon. So Morris says he loves NDI. NDI is really cool technology. It's been around for a long time. And uh, it's a, a, I don't know if it's licensed or if it's free. I think it's free, just provided by um, New Tech is the company that developed it and kind of um, made it. There's actually a really cool video on YouTube with the, um, the creator or the inventor of NDI talking about like how he created it, what New Tech's um, strategy was for making it available and making it, you know, the standard that people can use and bake into their products. There's a lot of hardware products and there's cameras that have NDI built in. So it's really a good standard to kind of um, pair with if you can. So school full screen projector. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good point, man. Um, so you could not even mess with NDI if you wanted to. This is a little trick. So say I've got my panel discussion up right here and it's frozen my my team's app's frozen. Um, what you can do is you can do a full screen projector of like the Dell right here. So there's color LCD, that would be this. So now I've got, there's my NDI, or there's my OBS projector, which is a full screen projector. Um, you hit escape to get back out of it. That's something I've done with my Xbox. So like I've got my, my Xbox here. Um, I've thought about doing like Twitch streaming and stuff like that. And what I've done is I've grabbed just like the Xbox input right here and done um, windowed projector like that. And that will grab like just Jim and make Jim his own window so you can make him full screen. And I thought about like that might be the easiest way to do it as I'm capturing it over Elgato. I could bring up my Xbox full screen and that could be what I'm playing the game on. Um, and because it's an Elgato HD 60S Plus, um, there's basically no latency to that. So I can play something like Modern Warfare and not worry about lag. Cool. So I think we're all caught up on, on comments here. There's a lot, of, a lot of Twitter replies as well. Thanks, everybody, who's, who shared this as well. Um, scrolling through here, it's a lot of 
screenshots of the, the YouTube window. Cool. So um, I think that's about it uh, to talk about. Kind of the big takeaways for me are um, to enable NDI in Teams. You need your Teams admin to go turn it on in the meeting policies. You need the app to be on the latest version and the user who has it applied to them will have to go into settings, permissions, and turn on NDI. Whenever they start grabbing NDI sources and that shows up um, inside of OBS, when they start accessing those NDI feeds, then um, a banner will display that says the organizer or someone is using broadcast technology. So it does warn them, it does let them know that, hey, their video might be sent somewhere else. But that's how you get it enabled. Be wary of that, that banner is gonna show there. So there's no, there's no tricking anybody with this type of technology. Um, and then the three things I'd like to see improved are hopefully we can move that logo around or hide it altogether since it's a, a paid service to Microsoft. Um, hopefully, eventually we can maybe separate that audio so that we could have you know, an actual mixing experience. In the meantime, make sure that you mute every NDI source except for one of them so you don't end up with audio doubling. Um, and then hopefully, eventually we'll get an NDI input for Teams so that we don't need like virtual cameras and, and plugins and things like that. If Teams could build a uh, virtual input for NDI, that would be just kind of the, the complete package, so. With that being said, uh, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate your time. And um, let me know in the comments on this video if you're watching this later, if you have any questions or if you found something cool that I didn't mention already, uh, let me know. I'm always like excited to check out this cool new stuff. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll talk to you all later. See ya.